consider now God's gracious ropes thrown out to you. The first one we're going to look at now is God using a man to show you the way and to throw that rope of grace out. To say, yes, you can be saved. That there is a God who loves you. Let's check it out there right now. Verse 31. Verse 31. Let's go back to John 5. You're not there. John 5. Now verse 31. The first rope, the man of God. Jesus talking again. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There's another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Verse 33. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I don't receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. Verse 35, he was, meaning John the Baptist, watch this, he was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. Pause right there. So he is talking, first of all, and he's saying, in light of this judgment, I'm trying to make it very clear to you that I love you. I'm trying to make it very clear to you that I came for you to save you. And the first guy that I actually ordained to tell you this message was John the Baptist. We talked about him in, in the first couple of chapters of John. He was the forerunner. Remember, we talked, he was like the, the rain announcer. You know, all right, in the, in the white corner, here it is. You know, God that became flesh and dwelt among us. Here he is, right here. Believe him. He came to save you. Believe him. And you know what happens in your workplace, in your neighborhood, at the gym? There's a whole lot of John the Baptist out there, aren't there? Some are pretty tactful. Maybe some are. Um, I know a guy. I talked to a guy recently. This dude is a John the Baptist. For real. Like, he's out there. But he loves Jesus. And he'll be at a gym, and, and people around him will be like, dude, look out. Holmes is coming, man. He's bringing, he's bringing Jesus. You know? And be like, get away. You know, everybody be running away. But I praise God for this guy. Now, I'm. My style is a little bit different that God gave me to connect with people and share Christ with them. But this dude just brings it. Said, man, one of my best friends who I work out with today, I actually worked out with him this morning, was led to Christ by this man. This was a John the Baptist. He didn't care what people thought. He was telling them, man, Jesus is the way. He's thrown that rope of grace out your way. Believe. Now, the other approach is there's some people, there's another guy I know, he comes to Calvary every now and again. And uh, he's one of those guys that has got a great job. And during his, uh, his lunch time, he just grabs the Bible. He, th he whips it out right on the desk right there. And he's that light. Again, he's that light, that bright, shining lamp. And it's a little bit more of like a 60 water as opposed to 120 water, you know. He's still that shining lamp for, for people to see that Jesus loves you. It's a rope of grace being thrown out their way. For you note-takers, jot down Matthew 5 and 16, if you will, which says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So you and I are to be lamps, and to be vessels where God can pour out and share his love. Now the problem is, there's a couple of problems that happen with that. Number one, some of us don't let that light shine because we're scared of what people will think, so we kind of... Kind of throw up this up, you know. And then I'm at church, oh, praise God! Workplace. I'm a, I'm a covert Christian, you know. I'm just, you blend in with everybody, a little camouflage, you know. Or, there's really never been any good works that have come out of your life. Your walk doesn't match your words. Yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But there's, no, there's never been fruit in your life to connect the two. And nothing's more frustrating to the outside world to see a Christian saying, well, I love Jesus! Get out of the way! You know, like, there's that, there's a disconnect that happens. That's a challenge to you and I both. And finally, the third problem with that sometimes, it says, they may see your good works and glorify who? Your Father in heaven, right? Not glorify you. See, a lot of us sometimes start walking with Christ, and, and as a result, our, our style changes, and, and good things are coming out of our life. And then some people are telling, man, you're a really good person. Yeah, I know. I know. Thanks. Oh, no, for real. Don't tell me. It's all glory to God. What? What else did you say about me? And so it becomes this me, me, me. No, no, no. We're lights. 
or ropes of grace to other people, telling them about the love of Christ, giving glory to Him. It's not about us. Have you had a rope of grace thrown in your life recently? That person at the gym, that person at the job, that person in your family, they've come home. Man, you'll never believe, man. Like, I had this, I, I, I met Jesus. I can't believe it. And they're, oh my goodness. You kidding me? Come on, dude. What cult are you part of now? You know, it's a rope of grace that God's thrown your way. And he's saying, connect with it, hold on to it. I want to save you. I want to spend eternity with you. It's up to you, though. It's up to you. Now, that's number one, through man. Secondly, we're going to see through miracles. Now let's continue on in, in John 5. Now let's read verse 36 and 7 here. So we have God connect, trying to connect to us through man. Now he's going to try to show miracles. Look at verse 36. But I have a greater witness than John's, really, for the works, and I circled that, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me, and the Father himself who sent me has testified of me, you've neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. So right there, he's like, there's a greater witness actually than John the Baptist. It's, have you seen what's been going on? The miracles that have been performing? You guys that have been here the last few weeks, do you guys remember some of the miracles? What was the first miracle that we saw in the book of John? Go ahead. Give it to me. Anybody? Okay, water to wine, right? Water to wine. I mean, that would, that would probably get my attention. You know, I'm, at, I'm at a wedding, and some dude takes a big thing of water, and it's just like, next thing you know, it's just like amazing wine. That would get my attention. I'd be like, hmm, there might be something to that guy. What was the second one? Second one, anybody? The nobleman's son, you remember that? That was on the fritz, really on his deathbed. And Jesus said, when he, this, this rich guy comes to Jesus, come on man, heal my son. Remember, it was his like, it was his aha moment. And Jesus goes, dude, go, go back. And he was 20 miles away, his son was. He's like, just go back, your son's good. He healed him from there. Again, boy, that is gonna get my attention. I don't know about you. That's going to get my attention. What was the third one that we just, we just talked about last week? There you go. The lame man. See, I like that. Go ahead, man. It's good brain. You know, the dude was, he was crippled for 38 years just sitting right there. And Jesus goes, man, tough on that. Grab the mat, walk, bounce. I'm, if I'm around there, I'm going to look at that miracle and go, there's something to it. Now, I'm of the adage, and you've heard that it says, actions speak louder than words, or the proof is in the pudding, right? So if I'm seeing God work in people's lives, boy, God's going to get my attention. He wants to prove that he's God through some miracles that you're seeing. One of the miracles that I've seen, down in Fort Lauderdale, there was a ministry, um, it was called Calvary House. It was specifically for men with different um, struggles and issues and addictions in their life, from gambling, from pornography, um, from drugs, you name it. And what we would do is we actually physically had a couple of homes that we'd bring these guys in with their lives are completely wrecked. I'm talking no money. They were divorced. They, 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 they didn't even talk to their kids anymore. They were done dealing. And they would go into this house and they would receive Christ and their lives would be completely changed. I'm thinking of a guy in particular that was a basically a complete meth crack at you name it. Left his left his family, left his wife and kids. And would you know, through a couple years at Calvary House, his life now <laughs> completely different. A, a literal miracle. Now that right there, what is that? God's doing that to, to, he's throwing the rope and he's saying, I am God. Like, tune in. Have you seen that? Maybe in your life? Maybe in your life? Maybe in the lives of someone else? A complete miracle? Um, I got a good friend here at Calvary Chapel that says, God's in the business of showing off. And I would attest to that. But why? The sole purpose of showing off is your soul. He's in the business of showing off. He's throwing out miracles. He's throwing that rope of grace to get your attention and say, don't go down, man. 